the Grand Master of the Teutonic Knights, Hermann von Salza, and the Pope together actually gave the Order of the Black Knights the same status as the Knights Templars, thus preparing the disappearance of the Templars merging into the Order of the Teutons right before the founding of their base in the Alps. Meaning that the Pope was in a conspiracy together with the Holy Roman Empire led by German kings against the French monarchy. Therefore the Templars never were really persecuted by Rome and the Pope, but only by the French clergy and the French monarchy in order to make the Templars and their immense wealth disappear without sharing with the French monarchy. Just follow the money trail and thy will be led into the light. So here it says in Wikipedia Hermann von Salza. Hermann was a friend and counselor of the Hohenstaufen Emperor Frederick II, that's uh, the grandson of Barbarossa, for whom he represented as a mediator in the papal curia from 1222 onwards. Pope Honorius III also recognized Hermann's capabilities and granted the Teutonic Knights an equal status with the Knights Hospita Hospitallers and the Knights Templars. There you go. After had gone into decline under previous Grand Masters. You see? The same status as the Knights Templars. They're just preparing the disappearance and uh, more concentrated on concentrating on the Germanic warriors for the aristocracy, um, turning them into the uh, the knights, um, the black knights, uh, the Teutonic knights. This is what happened. Coming back shortly to the other Grand Master from Korea about whom and the phenom ph phenomenon of Swiss sleeper agents I once discussed with the Chinese diplomat who promptly answered that China no, this called banana, outside yellow, inside white. Which of course would make Swissy Korean here a double cheese. Outside yellow like Swiss cheese, inside white like Swiss cheese eater. Where in fact the East Asians are all entirely lactose intolerant. Except that one blown up octagon dictator. Amidst all, amidst all his lactose intolerant subjects. And you can read in an article from Korea itself that they are lactose intolerant. You see, Here it's 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 by Sang Chung, a doctor. Uh, well, I put it in the description for you. And the other Swiss cheese eater, Mr. Putin, is one of them. And a Swiss sleeper agent and huge enemy of the Russian people. Only telling them what they want to hear. Just as Hitler did with the Germans. So they would die for the Fuhrer. So it's a very similar situation between 2014 and 1939. In Crimea there are huge Swiss... Um, uh, settlements of uh, Swiss sleeper agents like the Zurichtal, and this is Besser, it's next to Bessarabia. And the same th thing is here in the Baltic, uh, Danzig, that is now Danst, is the, it is Polish. This is where the Swiss uh, knight, uh, knights of the, uh, the Swiss Teutonic Knights, where they uh, went to. So it, it's a very similar situation where the Swiss is just defending their their interest. Now listen, imagine being a profiler of a crime scene, trying to localize the perpetrator of a crime by giving 10 points for every hit at the possibility scale up to 100%. Then Putin worked for the Komitet Gosudarstvenoi Bezupaznostia, KGB, as a colonel. And all secret services being octagon and against the people, well, 10 points for that, Mr. Putin, or 
Putin is from the Baltic and from Leningrad, which is now St. Petersburg, which is Teutonic sphere influence. 10 points, Mr. Putin, 20%. Putin was assigned in Dresden, Germany as a KGB agent and is totally fluent in German. 30% total, Mr. Putin. Putin even speaks Swiss German, says Swiss Burghalter, one of the seven Swiss heads of state and head of the OSCE, Organization for Security and Cooperation in Europe. A Swiss again, who is the head of it as well. 40% Mr. Putin. So, here it says in the newspaper. So, here's Mr. one of the Swiss presidents here. Look at how they're smiling, you know. Two brothers from the motherland. Otherwise, you never see him smiling like this. Here it says. Ich habe ihn auf Russisch begrüßt und er hat mich auf Schweizerdeutsch geantwortet. So, it says... I uh, I said in I, I I talked in Russian to him and he answered me in Swiss German. Here it says Schweizer Deutsch. So another one who speaks Swiss German. We got the uh, the the North Korean dictator who speaks Swiss German. Mr. Putin speaks Swiss German. Obama speaks probably Swiss German. So they all speak Swiss German. This is Octogon. So 40% Mr. Putin. Putin has his children born in Switzerland instead of in Russia. 50% Mr. Putin. In the 1990s Putin had 42,000 women and children murdered in Chechnya like a Swiss Teutonic Knight or by the Swiss Einsatzgruppen of Swissy Karl Jäger and being a Swiss mercenary tradition. And they did use mercenaries for that, who were called Kontraktniki. 60% for that, Mr. Putin, you Swiss fascist. Putin wages war with the Ukraine, together with his Swiss pal Yanukovych. See my film about it. Because the Ukraine is flirting with the NATO. But for his Baltic states of his Teuton Teutonic ancestors joining NATO, Mr. Putin didn't even mention it. 70% Mr. Putin. And Putin never says a bad word against Switzerland, though he knows that all the oligarchs who stole Russia blind during the private privatization era of after 1989 all brought the Russian wealth out of the country with the help of their Swiss banks. 80% Mr. Putin. And at least three of them here have um, connections to Switzerland. Here, here, and that one. Putin loves cheese, just like that Swiss dictator from North Korea, who even lived where the Teutonic Castle and Black Cross Church are. Well, we spare you this one, Putin, and no bonus points for your Swiss culinary uh, taste, which which is quite fishy for the least. But 80% is not bad, eh, Putin, you Swiss Teutonic, Teutonic fascist sleeper agent of Octogon. I know who you are, mate. Here it says here, House of Switzerland. So he's toasting with his Swiss brothers and eat some cheese with it. So you all see the Swiss crosses here on the Russian hats here and here on the Russian bonnets, you know, like military looking, uh, like, a, like a tank com commandant, you know, a tank commander with a Swiss cross. And here's the Swiss cross and here. So this is the same place as the picture before, uh, where we saw Mr. Putin toasting a wine with another Swiss seventh head of state of the Swiss SVP. A Nazi party in the Swiss house in Sochi during the Olympic Games. And why the Swiss house? As it says here, house of Switzerland. Why house in Switzerland? Well, you remember I told you, I showed you about the uh, Teutonic Knights. That was the, the German house. And now here we got the house of Switzerland. 
And why else, apart from that? Well, the pharaonic per a, or big house, is thus defined, just as the White House, indicating they're there all right, that pharaoh is there indeed. So here it says in Wikipedia about pharaoh, here, the origin, etym etymology, here. Pharaoh, meaning great house, originally referred to the king's palace. Well, it's absolutely wrong. Well, it does mean great house, but it also means house pregnant, to, the tran to my tra uh, translation, actually. And it's not a house to uh, go to the toilet in, or, you know, a house to, uh, to do your cooking. It's a royal house, a bloodline. And Pharaoh did have, in fact, a white house in ancient Egypt, which they called Perhet, with Per for house or bloodline, as in Per A, which has been translated with big house, but in fact is closer to Per A, house pregnant, or born out of the house of Pharaoh. So this is, you know, this is more like mainstream uh, history what they want us to believe, but these things go deeper, you know, just like the house of Switzerland. There's the house of, um, house pregnant, actually, uh, the house of Pharaoh. Th this, this is where it all started with. Therefore, Per is rather a bloodline than a building, as the Per Het has been interpreted by other historians as Pharaoh's state treasury, which is wrong to my humble opinion. Well here it says, I mean, okay he's on the on the right track some somehow, but it's it's wrong. Again, you know, in ancient Egypt their treasury was called the White House. And I um according to my translation it, it is ah per ah ha it is a house and being pregnant and it shouldn't be translated with a house, you know, literally. Um, uh, the pronunciation is not very, you know, maybe it's Englified, I don't know, hedge, but it's more like head, per head. So the White House. The White House is not a house, and he calls it the state, uh, their state treasury. I put in the links for you. Um, now here's some more about it. Uh, the ancient Egyptian treasury had operated just like the US Treasury does today. You know, th this wouldn't be that important for them, you know. <laughs> Somehow their state treasury today is Switzerland and the Swiss banks, of course. But again, house is a bloodline. It's not a house to put the money to do the cooking or go to the toilet or whatever. Or to put the president in it in Washington. It is not. And, uh, well, i tell you what it is. Per Het, or the White House of Ancient Egypt, is the ruling house over Upper Egypt wearing the White Crown. And Upper Egypt is in the south of Egypt, like where Akhenaten ruled, who is now back in his White House of Upper Egypt. Which is called Upper for Up River, considering the Nile flowing from south from Lake Victoria to the north into the Mediterranean. So here we see the um, uh, the white crown, here the white crown of uh, Perhet. They call it here Hedget. And this is why it call it's it's called the White House because it's the White House ruling over Upper Egypt. Uh, here. So well, look at it yourself. It, it's in Wikipedia. Put in the uh, description for you. So, uh, Upper Egypt is down south, like here, and Lower Egypt is like here, this is the Nile. And, um, yeah, it says Upper Egypt, that is Perhet. So the guy to the left here is Akhenaten, and he was ruling in Perhet, uh, with the white crown, over um, um, Upper Egypt. And therefore, the white, he was from the white ruling house. And this guy to the right, exactly the same face, it's a brilliant picture. Uh, um, he is from, uh, well, he is in the white house, you know. So, 
this is what it means. And these guys know that perfectly well. They all know it, believe me. They're not telling us, but they know it. And Switzerland plays a very important role in it. So this Akhenaton, and this is Obamenaton, White House, the the house of the the the, the ruling White House, and here the Washington D.C. White House. They perfectly know it, and it's amazing that this he's a descendant. You know, it, it can't otherwise be that he looks so similar. And for the north, all lower Egypt wearing the red crown. There's the red house or Bertasser being the ruling house. So lower Egypt is more up here. And here you can see the red crown. So red and white. You see what I'm getting at? Oh, wait, wait a minute. So here's the red crown. You know, it says Desret, the red crown of lower Egypt. Bertasser. And, uh, yeah. So there's a lower Egypt and an upper Egypt. And they were having a lot of problems, you know, like uh, having wars and problems, you know. Revolution against the old order and, and of course, Akhenaten in upper Egypt. That was more like a revolutionary type of guy. And then it was Lower Egypt, like here, the um, uh, original conservative Egypt, if you like. Here it says in Wikipedia, Ancient Egypt was divided into two regions, uh, namely Upper Egypt and Lower Egypt. To the north was Lower Egypt, as I'm telling you, you know, and where the Nile stretched out, etc. And well, read it yourself. Uh, lower Egypt, because upriver, like going here, is Upper Egypt, just like anywhere else in the world. And in fact, this system of Upper and Lower Egypt is still being used all over in the world, you know, like um, maybe also North Carolina and South Carolina, I don't know. I, uh, I should have a look at it, but most certainly in France, there's uh, Le Barin et Le Haut-Rhin. Lorraine, that means the River Rhine, that is uh, Alsace, uh, like in Alsace-Lorraine, uh, that's the east of, uh, of France, that's um, divided into two um, uh, departements, departments. And to the south is the um, uh, Le Haut-Rhin, so higher. So the south, is, it's higher, which normally you would say the north, it's higher, because if you look at the map, it's higher, but no, there's a river which is called Lille, which flows from the south to the north. So that's why uh, Lower Alsace or Baran, the Lower Rhine, is uh, to the south, just like in Egypt. So this is also something, well, we got everything from the Egyptians, don't, you know, everything. And here it says the red crown for Lower Egypt. And because the symbiosis or union of the two pharaonic houses or ruler dynasties of uh, Lower and uh, Upper Egypt, it finally took place in Europe through the Templars, also uh, red and white colors like the symbiosis here in the, 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 the double crown of Upper and Lower Egypt when they settled the wars and the, the problems among each other. So, here you can read it, there, here it says, uh, here, the white crown symbolized the pharaoh's control over Upper Egypt and was worn on occasions involving Upper Egypt only, well, here for Lower Egypt, and then the double crown was a combination of the red crown of Lower Egypt and the white crown of Upper Egypt, it symbolized the joining of the two lands and the pharaoh's control over the two lands. So later on in history, you know, they split again, you know, like you see, like we saw the, uh, uh, the problems between the, um, uh, the, uh, the French monarchy with the, um, uh, with the Templars and the, uh, who were having this collar here, you know, the, the, the double crown collar of white and, uh, and red and, uh, with the Pope in it and the, um, the Holy Roman, uh, empire uh, with um, uh, German kings in it 
So it's all related to this, you know. Uh, the symbiosis is finally uh, red and white together. <laughs> and wait, it even goes further. So it is therefore that Octagon Switzerland has a flag consisting of these two pharaonic colors of red and white, of the red house and the white house, and being neutral territory for the warring pharaonic parties, being a place to talk and make treaties, having all those Geneva NGOs and three-letter abbreviation orgs, a place for pharaonic neutrality, for better organizing their war on humanity. And they know it, you know, even the t-shirt itself has two colors of white and red. Oh, they know it. Oh, yes. All global decisions uh, get therefore always taken in Switzerland, together with all their interferonic peace talks. So whenever in history, present day or future, when you hear two fractions, red and white, fighting each other, well, then you know what it is. And as I've shown you in some of my other vids, the Swiss flag is the only one in the world being a square. So, you know, here you see some more flags, you know, like Canada, it's long, you know, here, or France, it's, it's you know. But the Swiss one is a perfect square, you see? It's different. This one is long here. And here's the Southern Kingdom of Upper Egypt. Here's the Northern Kingdom of uh, Lower Egypt. And here are the two, to not united again. So this is why the, the red and white colors united united kingdoms for peace and this is the pharaonic war crown in blue so th this is why these other nations you know like france here and england australia america you know they have these three colors because they are doing you know the fighting for the uh, for the united kingdoms you know in fact, the UK is this here. This is the United Kingdom, <laughs> not this one. <laughs> so, you know, this is why there's the blue. This is the war crown. Maybe because of the blue blood, the blue blood, uh, royal bloodline of blue blood. And, um, yeah, so this is a perfect square. It's totally different from the other flags. And um, I will tell you why. So here's the original Swiss flag. Uh, the sides are equally long. It has to be like that, as I've shown you just before. It's a per so therefore it's a perfect uh, square. It's called Eid Genossische Fahne. Eid that means the oath. So they are the Genosse, the um, uh, well, the brothers of the oath, so to say. And uh, the red square uh, is for representing the base of a pyramid of Lower Egypt, where most of the big uh, pyramids are, and the true and original base of ancient Egypt. Therefore, a red base underground in the Swiss flag. And the white cross stands for Upper Egypt, Akhenaton's new revolutionary model, later taken over by the revolutionary aristocratic Templars, also coming out of a pyramid in 2D, which I've shown you in my other videos, like Octagon, the Empire of Darkness, and later on in the Middle Ages and during the Crusades, depicted as the Red Cross of the Templars because of blood and revolution, but then later on turning white again as on the Swiss cross because Pyramids used to be white because of the white stone cover on them, which used to be there. The red base of the Swiss flag also corresponds with number four of the structure of power, representing us, the people in red, as the base of the pyramid, who have to bleed for this royal aristocratic bloodline of Pharaoh. So in this video here, uh, Octagon, the Empire of Darkness, I explain this. So here's the, here's the four, the base of it. And here's the octagon, and here's the hexagon in the middle. 
which has to be protected by the octagon from us. Number four here, the base of the pyramid. And this is all related to Switzerland. Switzerland is the base, the red and white base of the um, Union of Lower and Upper Egypt. Neutral Switzerland, where all the money is, where they can keep it safe. This is the function of Switzerland, the base of all evil, octagon.